Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me in the garage with many of the Skittles. But today is all about the Ford GT. Now, believe it or not, prior to this video, the last time that I actually saw my GT myself was over a month ago in Monaco at the end of Top Marks where we loaded it up to send it back to the UK. Since then, I've shot a few videos here in the garage, including collecting the G63 and bringing it back home. And many of you asked me, where is it? Where has the Ford GT disappeared to? What is going on? Why is it not in the garage? Well, there have been two things happening. The first is that I sent it directly back to Multimatic EU. Multimatic, the company that assembled the car themselves out in Toronto, Canada. They also have their European base here in the UK. Well, it went back there to have a service to be checked over and to make sure everything is running correctly ahead of the biggest and most ambitious tour that I have ever done in my life. That car, in a week or two, is going to be boarding a plane to go to the USA. Yup, I'm taking my American supercar on an American super road trip. I'm going to tell you all the details about it later on, but I have been planning this one for years and I cannot wait for the next couple of months and the content that is going to be coming. The second thing though was to give the car one more touch to the interior. Following from the changes we already made to the seats, there's a pretty significant thing we didn't yet do anything about and that's the steering wheel. So let's rewind a couple of days to head off to show you what went on with that on a day well it didn't entirely go as expected and then later on I'm going to tell you all of the plans for my trip to America with the Ford GT. So you join me at ADP Special Products, who make most of the interior in the GT. You might have seen recently though, we took my car down to Sparco, who are responsible for the seats, to bring some of the red and gold from the exterior into the stitching and also the embroideries for the headrests. Well today, we're going to be finishing off the car. These guys make basically the entire inside, and one pretty significant detail is the steering wheel. Now it might sound like a small touch, but believe me, this is going to look good. So it started very here let's head on inside then and go check it out before we're going to take the wheel over to Multimatic who will reinstall it back into the car to take it back home to the garage let's head straight inside then and take a look quickly then before we go upstairs to take a look at this steering wheel and I know I'm hyping it up a lot but believe me it looks fantastic I can't wait to show you in a moment down here we can see some of the examples of other projects from ADP special products and they do make pretty much the entirety of the interior of the Ford GT lots and lots so we have the seats done of course already but responsible for the central console the IP all of the steering wheel everything that you're seeing around so here we've got some of those examples the central console designed engineered and manufactured by ADP Special Products, all the carbon fiber, they're responsible for ensuring all of this comes together. These are the air conditioning or the register pods as they're called that attach to the doors. But you can see the different components. They also work with the likes of McLaren, with Bentley, with many different manufacturers. This is actually from the boot of the Bentayga, Bentley's SUV. And you can see the quality of this uh, and the finish of it all as well. Just open some of these so you can see and get an idea for this. So all of these different things that they're behind, some of which you can see here, but upstairs awaiting us is the steering wheel. So let's go and take a look. Here we go then, have a look at this. The steering wheel now to go to the GT and you'll immediately notice two new elements of this. We have the dual tone stitching in the red and gold to match with the rest of the interior, but also this very special touch of the satin man gold shifter paddles. Those are normally black, but this is inspired from the competition version of the Ford GT where they're anodized red. But in this case, those are absolutely epic. A touch to match the headrest embroideries behind when you're looking into the car and then the shift paddles when you're looking forwards and presented beautifully here as well. So this is my original wheel, the original airbag, the surround, all the controls, the shift lights up at the top, but completely retrimmed of course to now meet with that new stitching. And something else I particularly like are what we have here. These are part of the ordering kit. So you might remember back when I initially did my specification, you got this carbon fiber ordering box with the different samples, which was actually a product from ADP, something they created and were the brains behind. And they have very kindly made these some paint samples in the exact colors have a look at this for the interior Allen Man Racing painted again on the top here. You've got the leather with the stitch that you can see through there. The Alcantara for the IP and then the satin carbon fiber as we have on the interior as well. Really, really, really cool details. I love those kind of things to keep forever. Kind of, kind of 
part of the man cave for the rest of time. But this has also been through their full testing. It's been through as per a new steering wheel to ensure everything works. But basically they go from the concept, the initial drawings and sketches of this, to engineering it and making sure that it's actually going to work. And of course the Ford GT steering wheel in particular has a lot of controls on it. The cruise control selections here, for example the uh, wiper controls here, you've got some of the media controls over that size, the indicators of the buttons on here as well. And these shift paddles, they're unlike anything else because they have this slightly kind of cushioned dampening, a damper feel to them, a bit like a kind of suspension almost in the way you feel when you're actually pulling them. It's quite hard to explain but they look so cool in the man gold. Really, really epic touch. Very, very happy with how that's turned out. But while we're here also, have a look at this. They work with Singer. This is the Singer DLS uh, front fender, as you can see, for the headlights. And this piece weighs absolutely nothing. I mean, I, I can't really explain this, but I could pick it up with a finger. It's so unbelievably light. The uh, DLS being the super lightweight car that they recently introduced. Absolutely amazing. They've been behind that as well. Uh, in terms of making it more lightweight and many many other projects but this is truly epic and we're going to be taking that over to the gt i've actually just had a quick tour around and what a fascinating venue maybe in the future i'll be able to show you more of the work but the attention to detail and the quality of the products that go into the final result the gt that i know and love is unbelievable what's going to happen now though as you might have been able to work out is that the red rs is going to depart because i'm going to be jumping in with turbo tony who is just here um Tony, have we, have we managed to strap it in? Yep. <laughs> That's how we're transporting the steering wheel now safely in the box. We're going to take it over to Multimatic. Then um, actually later on, the GT is going to be in the back here, but we just need to be super safe and careful with that until it's back in the car. Um, so yes, all going pretty well. And I can't wait to see that fully installed. Hey, that sounds pretty good actually from the outside. Been a while, of course, since I heard it, but Schmark 150 is going to depart with the red focus. We'll be seeing that again very soon, I think. Looks pretty nice and clean at the moment. Of course, like I said though, maybe there'll be some updates to come with this. You might have seen my recent video, just thinking and pondering whether we'll change the gearbox, changing some of the exterior, maybe giving it some Topaz skin as well. But for now, say farewell to that. Later on today, we will be, well, changing it to the Ford GT to bring that home in the trailer. I'm sure that at least one person is wondering why I don't intend to drive the GT back home later on. Well, yeah, the weather today is pretty atrocious, unfortunately, so that's not the plan. However, something that's quite fun is I've now done my driving test for the B plus E license, which is what would let me swap actually now with Tony if I wanted to, to take the driver's seat yep. to drive your car with the trailer behind when we've got the GT in it later on. I don't think we're gonna be doing that today. I'm gonna to save it until I'm doing something with the G63. But nonetheless, we are making progress towards Multimatic. We are a bit late in the day, but they're very kindly waited so that we can get the steering wheel installed today so that we can take the car back home. And uh, yes, I can't wait for this finished result. I know I've said it a lot of times, but of course, like with taking the car to Sparco, we've been thinking about this for a long time. It's a huge thanks to ADP that it's been possible, but we'll get there, we'll get this unboxed, and we'll get it into the car. One steering wheel, has has been dropped off, but a small misunderstanding from my behalf in that the car still has a few other more complicated bits to do and being rather late in the day, that's not gonna be happening right now. So I will be back very shortly for you guys, at least a different day for me to see how the car is. Which brings me back to the present day where you joined me in the garage then with the Ford GT. So when it was finished at Multimatic, I was abroad at the time, the car was safely transported back by Turbo Transport and it is here now for me to take a look at the steering wheel inside for the first time. Now I know these are some very nerdy details, but this car is becoming so incredibly special to me ahead of even building the memories with the US tour that I'm gonna tell you about shortly. But to build my own tribute really to the Allen Man racing team, but work with the OEM manufacturers in terms of the wheels, the seats, and the interior to create this one-off tribute. Remember, the colors are inspired by the 1960s GT40s raced under Alan Mann Racing. In fact, this man himself, by the way, Mr. Bruce McLaren actually raced in an Alan Mann Racing GT40 as well. So just this thing, it's becoming a lifetime keeper. But let's come around then and have a look at this before I can run you through the details of where it's going to be going. So just unlock it, pop open the door. We've still currently got the steering wheel cover on. Let me remove this to take a look at this for the first time. And instantly the paddles look epic. Pull that away. 
this is just perfectly matched. We've used the exact same threads for the steering wheel stitching that we have on the seats, so the colours are a perfect match. If you look backwards, you've got those gold embroideries on the headrests, those match as well with those shift paddles. And if I come round actually, just to see this from the outside, let me just see what they look like when you look through the front window. Wow, that's really, really cool. Of course, the exact colour as the stripes that you see on the exterior. And if we go down here as well, you've got the headrest embroideries and the shift paddles, just small touches of colour, keeping it looking OEM, keeping it looking smart. That's very important to me. And now that's just one more thing that makes this car so incredibly special. But let me tell you about what's coming up with it. The trip that I'm now going to tell you about is something that's been in the works for a very, very long time. And by that, I mean about 15 years, back before Google even owned YouTube. That's some perspective for you. So when I was 17 or 18 years old, I had my first car, a 1.2 litre Renault Clio. I was hoping that one day I'd be able to upgrade that to a BMW 1 Series. And I had this hugely ambitious idea that if I got my BMW, I would put it on a boat, send it to America and go for a road trip around the entire country. Well, safe to say at the time that didn't happen, but I certainly never expected that I was going to start my YouTube channel and this is what it would become and that one day I'd be in the very fortunate and lucky position to own one of these, which I would say is probably the ultimate American supercar at this time, the Ford GT. And it's even more surreal that I'm now going to be able to live out this dream trip sending that car to America. It seems totally absurd, but in about a week or two, just after the Goodwood Festival of Speed, I'm going to be strapping that down to a pallet to load it into a cargo 747 to fly to JFK. I'm then going to follow myself on a different plane, get off and go around towards the customs clearance warehouse, where I'm going to drive that car then into Manhattan. That sounds totally unreal and my head can't quite comprehend what is about to happen and that's only going to continue during about a two month tour in total. I'm going to be going to New York, to Miami, to Los Angeles. It's going to take me all around the country. It is far too complicated to try and tell you the whole itinerary because I'm hopping around, flying some legs, trucking the car some legs, driving the good bits of course, but making sure I film some amazing content throughout, visiting collections, going to track events, going to all sorts of different things. Believe me, it is a pretty ramp packed schedule but this car I'm going to be going to New York to Philadelphia to Atlanta to Miami it's then going to be crossing over to Pebble Beach to Monterey Car Week LA San Francisco I'm thinking also of adding Las Vegas Houston or Austin or maybe both maybe Chicago I think I should take it to Detroit the home of Ford as well this tour is going to cover just about as much of the country that I can possibly squeeze in I've got a lot going on but the crazy thing for me is that that car is going to go to Times Square. It's going to go to South Beach, Miami. I'm going to drive it down Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. I'll take it across the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. This is all only going to build on the amazing memories that I already have with it and I think cement this as a permanent keeper. Now back when I got it, a lot of people I think were wondering whether I was actually, I guess if this is the right phrase, worthy of the Ford GT allocation, but I always had these ideas that this is what I wanted to do. I've been loosely thinking about it slowly building myself up to it of course it's a huge commitment financially but also in terms of planning to actually do this and fly the car that is not a cheap thing to do whatsoever and I am actually paying for it I'm not being subsidized by an airline or anything but this car I dreamt I'd be able to do this now I'm going to do it so we've built on it with some new upgrades from the OEM company's original parts for the car now the memories I've already taken it to Sardinia to the Nordschleife around Silverstone to plenty of other places and now it's going to go to the USA. This seems completely crazy. It was built in Canada. It went across to the USA for validation before it was flown to Europe. Of course, all of that before I took delivery at Goodwood. Now it's going to fly back the other way. This tour is going to start. I'll have details of meetings, our meetups to come as well, the events that I'm going to be at. All of that will come as I tie things up in the next week or two. And then I'm going to be in New York with this. I'm actually going to be in New York with the car. I know people do this. Remember where my channel started almost a decade ago? I was filming cars that came over from Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Kuwait, Qatar, Saudi Arabia. I was filming these cars on the streets of London, running after them, cycling after them, never in my wildest dreams, thinking that one day I might own some of these cars and be able to do a trip like this. My head you can tell the excitement probably from my voice. I've barely been able to get around the reality of it despite having been planning it for quite so long, but it is now happening. The Super USA Tour in the American supercar. 
yeah, what more can I say other than that there will be more details to follow of exactly what's going to be happening with this car, where it's going to be going, and the things I'm going to be getting up to with it when I'm there. But this, well, this is the thing that has kept me very distracted for the last couple of months, trying to tie up all the loose ends. Planning trips like this is no easy task, but this is going to be it. This is why it's disappeared recently. Preparing, getting it ready, getting everything set, which is now the case. It will go to Goodwood, I think. Then it will go on a plane to the USA. What is this? What is going on? All I can say is a huge thank you to everyone who has supported this journey because there have been a few things that I always kind of dreamt of doing. This is one of them, and this is only possible thanks to you guys who have supported everything that I've been doing along the way. So I'd also like to say a thanks, of course, to ADP for the work on the steering wheel, finishing off the interior of the car. It is now ready and set to go. Bring it on. The epic adventure awaits. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. As always, guys, I'm going to inform you a little bit more what's going on very soon. But for today, I'll wrap things up. Thank you very much, as always, for watching. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.